Hey everyone, this is Lynn Wilson. Welcome to my home. Welcome to my kitchen. If this is your first time here, welcome. I hope you feel right at home. Pull up a chair, get your pink fuzzy slippers on, grab a cup of coffee, and let's chat. Are you in a situation right now with the COVID-19 and the coronavirus that you're cooking 500 meals a day? I, I get the feeling. Do you feel like you're, you can't get your supplies and I can't get flour, I can't get rice, I, I can't get, or you're just running out of ideas or you're just tired of cooking or you want something simplistic? Well, I've got a couple of resources that might help. A um, couple things that I use that I thought I'd share with you. One is Clara's Kitchen. It's a YouTube channel that I do follow and she was in her 90s she has since passed away but her grandson is basically resurrecting her channel and Clara was 90 some years old she documented um, menus and food that was cooked during the depression that sustained her family and she has precious memories of growing up and visiting an aunt on Sunday afternoon and what they would serve as a special Sunday meal or what a basic meal would look like these are simple meals. Now you remember, well, I don't remember, but from our history books, we are told that things were in limited supply. You couldn't find sugar, you couldn't find coffee, you couldn't find basic things. They had to make do as well as they had no money. So they had to feed a family with the little bit they had. And you know, when you think back, the people that lived to their 80s and 90s, my dad's in his late 80s, he grew up in the depression as a kid. They are living into the ripe old age of 80s and 90s with beautiful, precious memories of what it was like to grow up in the depression. So thinking about that with my own kids, what are we creating with this coronavirus? What memories are we creating with mom used to make this simple meal out of lentils and rice or out of hot dogs or whatever. And it was the best meal I ever had. And the kids might have these fond memories to tell their grandchildren versus you'll never guess what my mother would cook for us. And it's all about the attitude and how we present the meal. It's in the attitude of how we cook the meal. And it's the attitude of how we as the parents and as the adults eat the meal. We should be thankful. We should be grateful for whatever food we have. And you know what? You can serve it on a real pretty plate and it could be boxed macaroni and cheese. I have done that many times for my oldest son when we had to live on that night after night after night because we didn't have any money. But I would put a candle on, I'd put a centerpiece in the table, I'd put the box macaroni and cheese right on the um, nice fancy dishes, and I would tell him we're having a banquet tonight. And he would eat that same macaroni and cheese, but it just added to it, made it a little bit more special. So create some memories. Don't just write this off as a rough time and a bad time. So getting back to Clara, she does have a YouTube channel. I'll link it below. Um, but she also has a book, Clara's Kitchen. And I was able to get this on thriftbooks.com. It's a used book site. It's great for all kinds of things. Um, I also get a couple of, I've, I, I don't get, but I have gotten a couple of cookbooks on how to use leftovers. What do you use? you know, this, that, and the next thing. And you can look up, you know, if you have leftover cabbage, you have leftover corn, you have leftover whatever. You look up the item, then they give you some recipes that you can use from your leftovers. So those books are available on Thrift Books. But Clara's Kitchen, she starts the book off uh, with memories of growing up with her family and where they came from and um, just all kinds of, oh man, I read the beginning of this book. It was great. But she has, here's pasta and beans. Um, just a frugal way to eat. She says, poor man's meal. Poor man's meal. That is one that um, I will link below. It's made out of hot dogs, cubed potatoes, sliced onion, a little bit of water, a couple of hot dogs, three tablespoons of tomato sauce. Now you're talking three tablespoons. So you still have a whole jar of sauce left to make some spaghetti or some meatballs and parmesan cheese optional but that recipe is in this book but i'll also link that video below egg drop soup and so much more so that is one you might want to pick up as we discussed depression cooking was simplistic it's what you had it wasn't anything fancy but oh so good food 
So another one that I love to use, I've used this for over 30 years, I think, maybe 20 years. It's been a long time. Dining on a Dime Cookbook. Um, I actually have a signed copy, which I'm so proud of, but I bought this when my oldest son, who's in his 30s, was probably less than 10. We were so broke, I used to have to skip meals to feed my husband and my son. And I saved whatever pennies I could to buy this cookbook because everything she does is on the frugal. I would not say it's cheap, it's frugal because the food is delicious. She has everything in here from basic desserts to icings, to sauces, to main dishes, to soups, to breads, to how to do house cleaning on a, on a budget with things you have in the house. She has how to make lip gloss in here, how to make slime for the kids, uh, foot massage oil, um, baby wipes, and oh my goodness, all kind, frozen bananas and kids' snacks and holiday muffin mix and all kinds of stuff. And um, you can go, I will link it below as well. You can go on her YouTube channel. I started following her before her YouTube, before she was anything big and famous like she is now. And that's probably why I have a signed copy. But um, she used to have a newsletter called um, Living on a Dime. And I used to get that newsletter once a month and I would treasure that. She'd have basic recipes and tips for frugal living. And it was such an encouragement to me because I didn't even know where to start. So I would highly recommend this cookbook. I probably refer to this at least once or twice a day. Um, I don't get anything out of this. I'm just being a friend to a fellow YouTuber and um, letting you know her cookbook is still available. Like I said, I'll link her um, channel below so you might want to check it out. This is just something fun. I had picked up in an antique shop years and years ago when I was antiquing with my grandmother in a town called Bayville where I grew up. And it was a um, antique store and it had a used book section. And I always have a fascination with old things and they look old, they smell old, and yep, the paper still smells old. So I bought this over 40 years ago. I have no idea how old it is but it's called Home Economic News, Public Service Electric and Gas Company. So I'll send a uh, link a picture at the very end of this of one of these pages. If you know who the Public Service Electric and Gas Company is or was, I would love to know where these came from. But it's all frugal meals, um, plain pastry and lentils and beans and um, Here's one for the convalescent, a liquid diet, a soft diet, a light diet. I mean, it has everything in here as holiday meals, pickles and relishes, canning, uh, all kinds of things. I'll try and turn that around for you a little bit. You can see the pages are yellowed, but it's like a home economics book. But it, to me, it seems like things that maybe that was during the depression. So that's kind of fun. So today, I wanted to share with you some resources, and here's three of them. Again, I'll link that information below. And also, a friend of mine, hello Ray, if you're watching my video, had given me a recipe for, um, it's called hot milk cake. And I'm gonna make that for you. It's very simple. Now, yes, you'll need flour, and you'll need sugar, and you'll need milk, and you'll need butter. So I don't know where you are and what, items you can find but if you can find these things this cake all you do every time you make it you change the extract so today I'm using orange extract so we're gonna have an orange hot milk cake another time you can use vanilla you could even use peppermint you could use almond that's the last one I made was almond extract and that drives my husband crazy he's got a little bit of British well not a little a little a lot of British and a lot of Irish in him and they love their almond paste and their almond extract so um, anyway you can whatever extract you want to do if you want to just use some orange juice instead or you want to add some strawberry jam instead of an extract you can do that as well so I guess my dog wants to get in on the deal here so we're going to follow the recipe. Let me find my phone because I have the recipe saved. I use Evernote. I don't know if you've ever heard of it or even use it, but I love it. And I can file it away and tag it. So we're gonna do two cups of flour, three teaspoons of baking powder, 
one teaspoon of salt, one cup of milk, one stick of butter, four eggs, two cups of sugar, and one teaspoon of extract of your choice. So you're going to put all your dry ingredients in one bowl. You're going to melt your um, butter with your milk in another bowl. You're going to beat your um, eggs and your sugar in another bowl. Then you're going to combine it all and put it in a bundt pan. How simple is that? I will also put a link for the um, directions and the ingredients and all that good stuff in the description below. So let me go ahead and get started and we'll go from here. So two cups of flour. And actually, let me get my stove on so we can uh, get the milk and the butter. And I need, I forget, one cup, how many cups? One cup of milk, one stick of butter. How can a cake be wrong with a stick of butter? That's oh so good. All right. All right, so we're gonna melt that down. And while that is melting, let me get my two cups of flour. I know I've heard so many people are saying they can't get flour, they can't get yeast. And then next week I see they have that, but then they can't get rice and whatever. So I'm sure it is frustrating to many people. All right, so our two cups of flour is here whoops losing my signal here and then we need let's see get this mixed in we need two cups of sugar so i'm going to put that in a separate bowl i'll show you all of that in a minute one two cups of sugar Get this out of the way and I'm gonna need a bowl to mix our eggs in and all right this is melting quick all right so let's beat our four eggs and there is no um, rhyme or reason to you know why I'm doing certain things first or second or whatever it's just the order I'm going in that's in my head okay and you're not supposed to get eggshells in your X which I just did let's get that out of there okay good I'm just beating the eggs with a fork, no big deal. So we're good there. Let's turn this off. I've already preheated my oven. Whoop, we're still melting that butter. Turn it back on for a minute. I'm preheating my oven um, while we're doing this. So we have our sugar. So I need to put the eggs in there. All right, mix that up. Oh, sorry about that. All right, so the eggs and the sugar, show you what that looks like. I'm gonna just mix that and give it a good stir until it's all mixed in. It's pretty yellow, looks like a sunflower. I wouldn't wanna eat it, but the raw egg in it. But anyway, okay, so that's mixed up. Check on our butter. Oh, we're still melting here, okay. In the flour, I need three teaspoons of baking powder, not baking soda, baking powder. All right, there's mine here. Three teaspoons, correct? Let me double check. Teaspoons, because we don't want tablespoons. All right, let's get three even of those. One, two, and three. We're just about ready on that. All right, the butter is almost melted. Let's see, a teaspoon of salt. I don't know if I'm gonna put in quite a teaspoon. That seems like an awful lot to me. 
think I'm going to do three quarters. And then, let's see, we've done flour, soda, baking powder, excuse me, salt, milk, butter, egg, sugar, extract. Okay, the extract needs to go in with the sugar, and we want a teaspoon there. Get it open, and again, I'm using orange extract, and and I always do a teaspoon and a bit because I like it strong. And I had made a um, recipe on Easter. I made some cupcakes, and I made from my Living on a Dime cookbook. It's a recipe. Oh, let me see if I can find it. I think it's like 2, 241 is the page number. Haha, <laughs> 241. Baker's frosting. Can you see that? Oh man, if you get this cookbook, you've got to use that recipe. It is so, so, so good. So, um, Baker's frosting, and I put that on. Well, it made enough for a dozen cupcakes plus. So, I think I'm going to take it out, leave it at room temperature when this cake is done. and and cooled off and put it on this tonight for dessert you know you got to have something sweet in the house when you're stressed out with this corona and everybody's has cabin fever and all that good stuff so all right so we're going to pour our eggs and sugar into our powdered mixture so let's get that in there oh you can smell the orange it smells so so good all right let me get this in here every last drop right my spatula says serve one another in love Galatians 5 13 a nice reminder isn't it we should be serving one another I'm gonna be working on uh, I made a loaf of bread yesterday and I'm gonna make another loaf of bread for us tonight but I'm going to make a second loaf for a neighbor and they don't even know it so um, but I just thought they do a lot for us. Their husband's really good at maintenance and every time we need something, our golf cart needed tires pumped up and they came over and pumped it up. So as a thank you and just to be neighborly, I'm gonna bake them some bread. So let me get my mixer down. And listen, you don't need a fancy mixer. This is a Black & Decker. I married, how many years, honey? It'll be 33 this year. Neither one of us remember, so we're not in trouble um, with each other anyway. This is from my bridal shower from many moons ago. I have beat this thing up, and it works. I love it. It's great. It was probably five bucks back in the day. So let me mix this up a little bit, and then we'll add the milk and the butter. Okay, so why don't you come on over here so you can see what it looks like. It's just like a little bit of a paste. So we're gonna mix that in. All right, that's good for now. And then, whoop, let's add in our, you can see the milk and the butter's all melted. Hot milk. Remember the name of this, hot milk cake. You can see that steam coming up. All right, so we're gonna just mix this up and um, we'll pour it into our pan. You don't wanna over mix this because you know when you mix flour too much the gluten comes out and it can be kinda not so good. But it's not like a muffin, where a muffin you kind of want it lumpy and you don't want it thoroughly mixed. This is a cake, so you do want it more smooth than you would a muffin mix. But um, I'll show you in one second. Let's get these into the sink. One more drip, there we go. Okay, so. All right, here's the consistency you want it. See that? All right, so we're going to spray our pan. I'm gonna use my 
crusty blunt pan that I bought at a thrift shop, oh, I don't know how many years ago, and I love it. I've sprayed it with butter flavor. Use whatever you have. Do not feel you need to follow certain things to an exact. If you have powdered milk, you don't have regular milk, use that. In the cookbook, do it on a dime. She even has, if you need an egg substitute, you can use soy flour and water. And soy flour is available over in, uh, where they have like specialty flours, flaxseed flour and you know, gluten-free flours and all that stuff. You can find soy flour, at least I could in my local supermarket. And she says use soy flour with a little water and that will be an egg substitute. So this cake could be substituted for the eggs with the soy flour. Powdered milk for regular milk. Butter, you could, I guess you, should, you could use margarine. Maybe even Crisco. Back in the day, that's probably all they had in the depression and you can get butter flavored Crisco. So I would say the only things you couldn't replace would be baking powder. She might have a substitute in her cookbook because she has a lot of substitutes, but you get the idea anyway. So I'm going to put this on. I have a pizza tin from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to put that on there just in case it spills over. Put that in my oven and I'm going to put it on 350 for 40 minutes. And when it's all done, I'm going to let you see what it looks like. Okay, I'll see. Hey, welcome back to my kitchen. Okay, so the hot milk cake is officially done. It's still warm on the bottom. We've already sliced it up for the first piece. I did not have enough icing to do the sides. I only did the top. But hey, we're using up our bits. We're using what we have. I could have made more, but I thought, you know what? It's gonna taste great with just a thick layer right on the top. So it is warm. So I have a tasting partner over here. This is my youngest son, Gavin. So he's gonna give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, tell you what, you, what he thinks. It's still warm, so. It's still warm. <laughs> yeah. Is it thumbs up or thumbs down? Um, it's going up to heaven. It's going, okay, it's going up to heaven. Let me taste it. You yeah. taste the orange? It's, it's delicious. Thick. You guys have to come over. We'll have a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and a piece of cake. Mm. So, I did want to show you one other thing. I took grapes the other day. It was a whole bag of grapes, nice big bag. I don't know what size exactly, but I dehydrated them. People ask me all the time if I really make my own raisins. There you go. So I have this container here. You can put it in a nice airtight container. This will stay for months and months and months. Making scones, making some raisin bread, whatever you need these, we're gonna be making bran muffins. My son Gavin and I don't like the raisins because I think they squeak when we chew them. My husband likes the raisins, so we're gonna do half with, half without. And I wanted to remind you, don't forget to check out Clara's YouTube channel and her book. I'll link the description in the description below for her channel. Don't forget to check on this cookbook if you want some great recipes that are frugal to help your family. Stopping by, thanks for joining me in some resources of cooking that will help you stay on a budget, do things inexpensively. I hope you try this hot milk cake. I will put the uh, recipe in the description below. So check that out and try that with all your different extracts. I hope you're having a great day. Please come by and visit me again. I hope you feel welcomed in my home and I hope you feel welcomed enough to stop by again and come visit me. And as always, if you have a prayer request that you need something prayed for in your life, leave a comment below or also in the description below is my email address if you'd rather do it privately and I would love to pray for you. Thanks for stopping by and you have a great day.